Hello, I'm Jake Woodrow, civic journalist at Telecommunity Television. In this edition of Straight Talk, we are speaking with Pradoxbury resident Archie McLaughlin, who announced he's running to be mayor of the town of Pradoxbury. Welcome to Tello. Jake, thanks very much for reaching out to me, and I, I look forward to having the opportunity to, to talk to you. Well, that's great. Um, I know in most circles in town you're well known, uh, but there might be some uh, recent residents, new residents of the town, and some younger voters who might not know you as well, and maybe if you want to introduce yourself or talk about yourself. No, 100% right, Jake. Uh, I, uh, if you know me, you, you've known me for quite a while, but if you're just like you alluded to, someone new or young, uh, younger, uh, I've, uh, <clears throat> I'm Archie McLaughlin. I've lived in the town of Port Oxbury for probably uh, 35, 36 years. Uh, before that, I was uh, raised, born and raised in West Bay Road in Inverness County. Uh, quite familiar with uh, Richmond County and, and uh, worked down here in the mid 80s with a construction company. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm interested in, in uh, running for the mayor of Port Hawkesbury. I ran four years ago and uh, unsuccessful, and, uh, but didn't run for a one shot deal and, and uh, looking forward to. Uh, to getting out on the doors of the voters of the town of Port Hawkesbury and, and hearing their uh, questions and concerns. Now, um, I know you've been involved with the uh, union <coughs> and, uh, and uh, at the mill. And, um, you know, what in your life experiences and, and skills uh, do you think can have prepared you to be uh, mayor? Yeah, thanks. Good question. Uh, I've, I've worked in, uh, since uh, probably 35, 36 years in, uh, at the paper mill in Port Hawkesbury. Uh, and part of my work there, I got involved with the union and uh, I've had probably 25 years of uh, union experience uh, as a shop steward and an executive member and I've been a president of uh, our, our Unifor Local 972 for the last uh, seven or eight years. I also sit on uh, Unifor's uh, Atlantic Regional Council. I'm an executive member of that council. And prior to Unifor, I was, uh, we were part of uh, Communications, Energy, and Paper Workers Union, and I sat on the National Executive Board of, of, of it. So that experience has given me uh, lots of opportunities to, uh, to negotiate and, and deal with people uh, and, uh, fairly and, and listen to people and hear their concerns, and uh, I, I attribute that uh, union experience uh, as a, a great uh, foundation to, to turn to, uh, to politics and uh, local politics, politics, municipal politics, and uh, that's one of the, the big reasons I'm running for, for the mayor of the town of Port Hawkesbury. And uh, you mentioned uh, that you ran in 2020, and um now you're running again in 2024. So why did, did you decide? Would, uh, what went into that decision to reoff or to uh, run again? As, run as again? Yeah, it was when I ran four years ago. It was uh, uh, a decision that I didn't come to lightly. But after consulting with uh, family members and a lot of people had come to me uh, asking me to, to run for mayor, I ran for mayor four years ago, uh, and uh, it wasn't for a one-shot deal. Uh, and I had uh, plans to to run, uh, you know, if unsuccessful, uh, to run again, and and that's why I'm I've announced uh, my intentions to to uh, seek the mayor's position again. As you see it uh, right now, what are the major issues facing the uh, town of Port Oxbury? Few major issues, but. Uh, it's the people that have come to me, and there's a, a number of people who have come to me from various uh, uh, situations. They feel that the town has been stuck in in what the what the term that was used to me was neutral. We haven't progressed uh, in the last four years and probably eight years. It just seems we're we're going in in stuck in neutral, and uh, <clears throat> being a a long-term resident of the town of Port Hawkesbury and growing up outside of the town of Port Hawkesbury, I've always had a great uh, feeling about the straight area. And the straight area has such a, such a potential 
uh, that, uh, and we just uh, haven't seemed to be able to progress. And it's always, uh, you always hear about the next big project and uh, it just never seems to come, uh, come to, to be. And uh, I hope, as, as, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to win as mayor, is to be able to, to uh, come together with the other municipalities and the town of Mulgrave and, and uh, the seven eastern counties and, and as, a, as a unified uh, group, be able to uh, negotiate with the province and the federal government to, to build up this whole area. And we have such, such potential. And I hope to be able to, to be a part of, part of that. Now, you mentioned working together collaboratively and, and uh, working with other municipalities. Um, what other solutions or strategies um, do you hope to employ uh, to address some of the big issues facing the town? <clears throat> the council, it seems, the last number of years hasn't worked together. And, and I, I hope that I would be able to, to uh, work with the councillors and the, uh, the whole group and, and to get more focused on. And certainly, uh, you know, the Reeves Street uh, situation is, has been an a ongoing problem and discussion for, for a number of years. And it, and it, shouldn't, have, uh, it shouldn't have been that way. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we've, one of the big concerns that people have is, uh, is our tax base. Our taxes are very high in the town of Port Hawkesbury. We have to, we have to, you know, uh, try and address that. Uh, I don't have any uh, immediate solution, but we, if we get together with the provincial government and see if we can work something there. Uh, senior housing is a, is another issue. Housing in general for for low income, middle income. We have a lot of. Uh, residents of the town of Port Hawkesbury have been there their whole life, own their home, and they're they're getting to a situation where they they uh, <clears throat> are having difficulties maintaining and keeping their their existing homes up. They want to stay in the area, but there's no place for those people to go to. So there's a and and it was talked about four years ago about doing something about that situation, and and in the last four years. I don't see anything on the horizon for that. And we have to, you know, with the help of the federal and provincial government, do something there. Because there are a lot of people that, that live in the town of Port Hawkesbury and surrounding areas want to stay in, in this area. They don't want to, you know, there's been a lot of people, nothing against Annie Ganish, but we have a lot of people have moved to Annie Ganish uh, into, I would call, you know, uh, senior citizens, uh, one level apartment buildings and all that kind of stuff. And uh, those folks want to stay here. They don't want to move to the, to the mainland. So if you are elected, uh, um, what are your pri uh, priorities in your first term? What are the goals you want to set for the f four years, the first four years of, uh, of your term? <clears throat> well, the Reeves Street uh, situation, uh, there is a, a plebiscite that's going to be taking place on, on Election Day. And that, that gives the opportunity for the for the voters in the town of Port Hawkesbury to, you know, uh, address that situation. So, you know, uh, I would, on, when I go door to door, I'll be asking people to, to you know, vote in that plebiscite, make sure that they, they vote and, and make them aware of the plebiscite questions. And, uh, <clears throat> and that will be their opportunity to say yes or no to uh, changes. The province owns and operates and maintains Reeve Street, uh, basically, and so they uh, they will uh, be very interested in the, in the results for the plebiscite. So, um, my own personal view, uh, I really, you know, uh, it's if I elected mayor, it's not my personal view. It's uh, I want to reflect the the uh, concerns of the residents of the town of Port Hawkesbury. So. Uh, It'll be important for people to, to express their opinions on the plebiscite to, uh, to say they want Reeve Street to continue the way that they, it is or, or to go back, but ultimately be the province's decision on what to do there. And uh, if it's a, you know, I would, I'm not speaking for the province, but if it was a, a close vote, 
I'm quite certain they probably wouldn't do much to change it, right? So, but if it's a if it's a 90 to 10 for or against, uh, then they would be, uh, you know, a lot of pressure on them to to do something. But that would be my role as president and or sorry, uh, as uh, mayor to uh, negotiate with the with the province and you know talk to them about okay this was the result of the plebiscite and this is where we should be heading. Now uh, you talked about a plebiscite that's going to be running with the vote and the vote's going to be taking place entirely electronically there's going to be no paper ballots this yeah. time around for the first time ever in the town um, what are your expectations for how, how the vote is, is going to go? Well it's uh, you know I guess from the age I am and uh, I've always, you know, uh, I'm very, I always uh, wanted to vote with, with a paper ballot. So it's going to be a difference. There's no doubt about it. And when you do something for the first time, it's, there's always going to be hiccups. So I anticipate there'll be uh, a lot of, uh, some frustration of, of the people there, especially people that aren't used to uh, uh, doing stuff electronically. Uh, but it's uh, obviously the way of the future, I would think. And uh, but I guess coming from the paper industry, I, I have a lot of sympathy and, and uh, hope that we, uh, the more paper we use, the better off we can be. But it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, there'll be some hiccups, I'm sure. So um, the election is taking place on October 19th. 19th. Uh, yeah. You announced you were running a little while ago. And uh, so how have you been... Uh, spending your time on the campaign trail uh, so far, and what are your plans for the coming weeks? Yeah, it's uh, most of the stuff that I've done, I haven't done any door-to-door -door as of yet. Uh, I've done a lot of work on, on, uh, on the phone and uh, getting a, a team uh, together. And uh, so the next uh, week, week and a half, I'll get out actually physically door-to-door. -door. I've got some... Uh, some brochures to to print and and uh, door knockers to leave behind. So I'm looking forward to uh, that's where you get to the real uh, social media is a is a very important part of of everybody's life today. But getting to meet people on their doorsteps to hear their their uh, questions and concerns are are so vital to to this. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for taking time out of your day to travel down to Arishad to our studio here and uh, answer some questions. Uh, uh, and again, thank you uh, to uh, you folks here for reaching out to me to give me this opportunity to, to, uh, to talk to you. And, and uh, I know you have quite a following, so it's uh, the more I get to, to be seen, the better off for me and, and the viewers to, uh, to get to know me a little better. Thank you very much, Jake.